Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the ADXL 345 accelerometer to start getting acceleration readings in the X, Y, and Z direction. And I'll also be showing you how to quickly calibrate the X, Y, and Z directions of acceleration to get more accurate representations of those values when you are taking measurements. So if you are watching this video, you'll notice that I am using a two-sided version of the ADXL 345. There are many different configurations of the ADXL 345, but really you can use any one if you are watching this video. Just make sure the respective pin connections are the same. And also we are using an Arduino Nano. So if you are watching this, we will be using the Arduino IDE. So as long as you're using any Arduino based microcontroller, you should be good to go. Just once again, make sure you match the connections appropriately for your board. So you can see the connections we have are characteristic of I2C communication. We only need four jumper wires. So the first jumper wire we need here in red is connected to the 3.3 volt pin respectively on the ADXL and the Arduino Nano. And we also have ground to ground. Make sure you do not mess up the, the power pin with the ground pin because that can cause some issues and potentially fry some electronics. And next thing we have is simply the SCL and the SDA pins as you could see there and yellow and green connected to the respective SDA and SCL pins on the Arduino Nano. So if you have all that set up in your device is powered, you should be good to go in terms of the physical setup. Now let's jump into the Arduino ID and go over the script we will be running to get acceleration values and to better calibrate our sensor. Okay, so jumping into the Arduino IDE, I'm just going to assume you have that set up and you are connected to your Arduino based microcontroller. As I mentioned, I am using an Arduino Nano, in this case, the every version. And in today's example, we'll just be using this one code that I have here. So if you're following along, you could just copy line by line if you're watching this. And so what we have here in this code is we're actually not using any third party libraries, which is nice. The only library we are using is the wire.h library, which comes built in with Arduino. And this is a library we use for I2C communication in Arduino. So what we have at the beginning is we are just initializing some variables here. In this case, the ADXL345 I2C address, followed by the acceleration values. So these are just initializing the acceleration values as floats. And these are just the calibration values. We'll get into that in a second after we rerun the script and we go over how to calibrate it. And so in the setup, we are just going to uh, set up the, the I squared C communication with the device. So we're also setting up the baud rate as 9600. And we're using wire.begin to initialize the wire library. And we're running this user defined function ADXL or configure ADXL 345, which is defined down here. And this function, we're not gonna get into too much detail, but it pretty much allows us to begin transmission or just getting values from the ADXL 345. So as you can see here, we're enabling measurements and we're just adding a small delay to give some time to essentially boot up the device. And then once that is done in Arduino, what happens is once you run, once the setup is done, as you can see up here, it's going to run this loop function. If you are familiar with Arduino and how it works. So this loop is just going to continuously run and we are going to start getting values from the ADXL 345 address that is going to give us acceleration readings in the X, Y, and the Z. So that's what we're doing there at a high level is we are just um, writing to that to get the values that it's giving to us every interval. And to pull those values, we just call wire.read, piped with wire.read, and we do some some bit manip manipulation that we're not gonna get into into the scope of this video. That's a little too advanced for today's video, but what we're doing here after that is we're dividing by this number 256. So the reason we're dividing by this number 256 is because in today's example, we're reading ranges of negative two Gs to positive two Gs, but really with the sensor, you can read from negative 16 Gs to positive 16 Gs, and you will have to essentially change this number and some other parameters if you want to do that. So this 256 actually comes from the data sheet of the ADXL 345, which you can find online. So if you're more interested in getting high G applications of the ADXL 345, you can find the specs to do that on the data sheet online, and it should be relatively simple. However, in today's video, we'll just be reading negative two Gs to positive two Gs, and a G is just representative of 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's why we're doing this 256. Once we get the raw, Y value from the register or the X value or the Z value. And finally, we're just printing those values every half a second. So if we go ahead and we just run this and our connection is fine, we should start seeing values in the serial monitor. So if you never opened the serial monitor before, you can just go to tools and you can go to the serial monitor 
And so it is uploading right now. And so we can just go to the serial monitor tab and it's going to start giving us values as you could see here. And make sure you set the baud rate respectively. So 9600 to 9600 above, as you can see there. And we're getting acceleration values, which is awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my accelerometer here, as you can see. So I'm moving it around. You can see it's changing. So it makes sense. And one thing you could do as a sanity check to make sure that it makes sense is if I put my accelerometer in this orientation, as you can see, it's pointed flat from the surface or from the table, the Z should be about one. So that's about one G, so 9.81 meters per second squared. That makes sense. And we're about to calibrate that in a second because it's a little off and that's expected. And of course, each axis, if you tilt it, you should get about one G if it's stationary. So if I, if I tilt this 90 degrees, as you could see here, we are seeing the Y is about one G, so that makes sense. And that makes sense because if that axis is pointed positive direction against gravity, it should be about one G. So you can do that for each axis just for a sanity check. So everything looks good here. The one thing I did notice is if Z is pointed upwards against gravity, as we just mentioned, it is slightly off, so it's over one G, which doesn't make sense. And this is because we have to calibrate our sensor to remove the inherent bias of uh, of such sensors because a lot of these cheaper accelerometers come with some bias that we have to try our best to offset and clean up to get more accurate representations of the acceleration. So if we want to calibrate this, typically you want to calibrate devices before you start using them in application. So if you turn off and turn on your device, you typically want to recalibrate it every time. So in this code, I did a very um, rough rigging of a setup of how to calibrate it. So if we want to calibrate one axis at a time, which we can do in this code, the first thing we want to do is simply, we want to uncomment this calibrate function. So this initiates calibration of the accelerometer. So I have some directions here, but really you can add some robustification of this function later on if you find you like this function and it all makes sense. So pretty much what we're doing in the calibration function is we are pointing that axis, the axis that we want to calibrate. In this first example, we have the Z axis. So we're going to point this device upwards against gravity and we're just going to hold it there until the calibration is done as steady as possible now in this video i'm actually holding it with my hand but it's actually not good practice to hold it with your hand because most hands are jittery and not very still so that's not actually a good calibration process and of course you're eyeballing it to see if it's flat typically what you want to use is a something called a calibration block to hold it against gravity to make sure it is as accurate as possible but just for today's video, I am holding it upwards against gravity. And during the calibration process, I just want to keep it as stable as possible. So if you are moving it during the calibration process, that is very bad calibration and it could ruin the values you are getting from your accelerometer. So right now I'm holding it upwards against gravity, as I just mentioned for the fifth time maybe. And we are just going to start recording raw values from the accelerometer. And we're going to record 500 raw values. So I think that's a good amount of values to get a calibration value, but really you can play with this number. The higher it is, the more accurate calibration you will get, but 500 is typically good enough in this application. And so what we're going to do is simply, I uncommented things related to the X and Y because we can only calibrate one axis at a time. So because we are calibrating the Z axis, we can just focus on the Z sum. So we're just gonna sum all the points. And then once we get all the points, the raw points, as you can see, we didn't divide by 256 because we want the raw value we get from the accelerometer. We can simply div divide by the number of readings to get the address or the, the average. As you could see up here in this case, we are dividing by 500. So we took 500 points. And so once we do that, we are going to minus 256 by that number we get because essentially we want to get a difference of what we expect. So the expected value in this position is exactly one G and one G is equal to 256 in terms of the raw value. And so the difference we have here is essentially the bias and we are dividing by four. And the reason we're dividing by four is because we're doing this in a range of minus two G's to plus two G's. So that's a range of four on the number line. So we have to divide by four because we are calibrating in a range of negative two G's to plus two Gs and that is four. So that's essentially what we're doing there. And then once we have the offset, we're simply going to print it. We're going to add a small delay. And also what we're going to do 
is we are just going to write to the offset address. So this accelerometer comes with an address that we can write the offset to. And you only have to do this once. So once you calibrate it on the Z axis the first time, you can just go ahead and comment this, or you can just uh, comment the calibration function. And as long as the sensor is powered on, it should remember the offset value we calculated, and it'll just uh, add it to the address, and it should uh, change the value we are reading for acceleration based on the offset calculation we just did. So let's go ahead and do that. As I mentioned, once again, my accelerometer is essentially pointed straight upwards against gravity to calibrate the z-axis. And we are just going to go ahead and rerun this. So we uncommented the calibrate function and we are going to calibrate the z. And once we do that, we should start seeing instead of 1.20, when this thing is stationary upwards against gravity, it should be about 1.00. And if that's the case, we know we calibrated relatively successfully. I, again, it's not perfect because I'm not using a sensor block or a calibration block, but it is pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and upload this. So give that a moment there. Let's go to the serial monitor. Let's clear that out to start fresh. So we can see we're going up to 500 points. We got an offset of about negative 14, which is awesome. And looks like we calibrated close to that 256 value. That is 1G, which is awesome. So we calibrated the z-axis properly. And so we're only gonna do the z-axis in this video because it does take long to calibrate. So if you are interested and you do understand, hopefully you did, you can do the same thing with the x and the y um, axes. The only thing you have to do is change the orientation and, and point them um, upwards against gravity and do the same thing, just hold it in place and you should start seeing more accurate representations of your acceleration based on that calibration process. And once again, this isn't the most robust code. It just gives you a good idea of how to get values and how to calibrate the accelerometer. So I hope I gave you a good understanding of how to get started with the ADXL345. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have some awesome projects with the ADXL345 because it is a great accelerometer.